Poe Black, or Jackson, depending on who you ask, was killed and his body dumped in the Coachella Canal near Slab City in May. There has been little shared publicly about the investigation into his murder, but now the Imperial County Sheriff have identified a person of interest, a trans woman known as Knives. Hey everybody, welcome to True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. I'm Christy Brower here with my sister, co-host, and partner in crime, Katie Weaver. Hey Katie. Hello. How's it going? It's going well. Well, glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Well, except for that, you know, we've had quite the cold snap. We've actually had to turn on our furnace. Yeah. <laughs> it's only September. I know this has been the strangest year, so hot for so long and real early. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like fall is hitting really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the pigs are pissed off. They're not having it. Uh, it is supposed <laughs> to warm back up, though, you know, midweek. So, yeah, my doctors are not we're really going happy. to live, but yeah. We are. But yeah, today I kept debating all day, all morning. I'm like, ah, oh, it's only 64 in here. I'm freezing my butt off. And I'm like, oh, it's going to warm. It's going to warm up. You know, by mm -hmm. noon, it was still that cold in the house. And I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm turning on the furnace. Yeah. Yeah. It's that time of year when you don't know you bounce back and forth between air conditioning and the furnace in the mm -hmm. same day sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll take it. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the fall weather. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Leaves are starting to change. Time to take some drives. I'm down. Right. There's just, there's that sweet spot between when you're not running AC and you're not running heat, you know, yeah. like your power bill's the best it's ever been. Anyway, <laughs> haven't Not had much of it. Start frankly. running heat in September. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's funny. Well, we come to you today with an update. Yeah, a little bit of positive movement forward in a case, and this is something mm -hmm. that we really like. And this is the Poe Jackson or Poe Black case. Now, Poe actually went by both last names through with different groups of people. So mm -hmm. please don't add us that we are dead naming him. We are not. Poe is a trans man or was a trans man. And um, just for clarity, I like to use both last names because Poe went by Jackson at home in Tennessee and went by Black in Slab City in California. And, you know, I feel like both um, parts of his life should be connected as far as people knowing about what we're talking about. Absolutely. Yeah. So both names are absolutely relevant. Well, I think that they are in this case. Yes. And that's mm -hmm. always a little dicey when you're working on a case with a trans person because you want to use their correct pronouns and their correct uh, name. Mm -hmm. In this case, it seemed that, that Poe liked to use different names with different people and that's okay. Yeah. But also that. sometimes went by Legion as a first name and yes. also went by Oliver as a first name sometimes too. So, yeah. You know, if someone chooses to go by multiple names, it's okay to use multiple names. Mm -hmm. But don't come yelling at us for using one or the other. Or No, just, because you, know. you just don't know. I mean, we've talked to people in Tennessee that know Poe by one name and people in California that know Poe by another. So, you know, or more than one. Yeah. Yeah. So Poe was murdered in May, uh, in fairly early May. Mm hmm in Slab City, California, uh, found in the Coachella Canal. Um, Poe had been stabbed multiple times. Yeah. There's not been much information given about an investigation into Poe's murder, and there really have been some questions about if there even was an investigation into Poe's murder. We have to say, give big kudos to one of Poe's closest friends in high school from Tennessee, who has really, um, I have communicated with this person a few times myself. This person has kept the police, um, you know, on their toes, continues mm -hmm. to work um, social media campaigns to try to get more attention mm -hmm. on Poe's murder because Poe deserves some justice here. Yeah, yeah. So the um, Imperial uh, County Sheriff in California have actually come out 
with publicly stating a person of interest. They actually have two persons of interest, but they have not named the second one. So I'll give you the second one quickly, and that is Poe's partner, the person that Poe came to Slab City with originally. The police have lost track of this person. Mm-hmm. I don't know this person's name. I have never been given this person's name. The police no. are not giving this person's name out publicly either. I don't know why that is. It seems strange to me because they say they are looking for them and would like to talk to them some more, but they are not really seeing their name. And, and we've had multiple contacts on this case. Yeah, and nobody gets anyone their name. will say is Poe's partner. That's yes. all we have ever been told. And yeah. we don't know if this person goes by multiple names. No, we don't know. We don't know a single name. Mm-mm. Yeah. And I have probably more sources on this case than maybe any of our other cases that I've done. Mm-hmm. I still don't have this person's name. So, I know. Anyway, what we do know is that the other person that is a person of interest, <laughs> it's not much more helpful. It is a person who, a trans woman, who goes by the name Knives. Knives went also goes by a few other names, but pretty well known as Knives, as we have actually had um, other other sources mention Knives as a person yeah. that was maybe known to be violent there in the Flamingo camp in uh, Slab City. So there were concerns yeah. about Knives. Yeah. And the police have been keeping track of knives as she has traveled um, away from Slab City, potentially into Oregon, but has now lost track of knives. Mm -hmm. But there are concerns that knives may in fact be um, involved in some way in Poe's death. Right. So being named a person, person of interest means the police want to talk to you. Yes. You know, they think that you know something along these lines and they want to talk to you. That that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that, you, you know, are being accused of a crime per se. It does mean that they want to talk to you about what yes. you know. Yeah. Yeah. Can we put that uh, wanted poster back up? Oh, uh, yeah. Hang on one second. Let me throw it up into the right uh, into the right batch of stuff. Give me one second on that. <laughs> that that made a lot of sense. That sounded like English, didn't it? Well, I knew exactly <laughs> what you meant, but I'm sure that you did. But this, yeah, let me let me get this picture up so that we can take a look at this person known as Knives. Um, you know, there is a lot of hope here that this case will be solved. Mm-hmm. And there's really a lot of um There are a lot of people that care about Poe. So Knives has also been known as Mistress or Sonia Renault. Um, But most well known as Knives. Mm -hmm. So here are some pictures of Knives. And the Imperial County Sheriff's Office is just looking to talk with Knives and looking to talk to anybody that knows their location because there are some questions about whether or not they know something about Poe's death. Yeah. Um, You know, the thing that I think is good about this is that it indicates that the police actually are doing something. Yeah. Which there were questions, you know. There, there, there's, as you know, if you've been following this case, we've had some interesting experiences with the folks from Slab City. And... Interesting. It's, That's a good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it. what what we've understood is that there is kind of a um, challenged relationship mm-hmm. between Slab City and the police. And so uh, there are some, you know, this has been a challenged situation. Well, and we have multiple sources that have told us that there are multiple murders that go on there every year that's kind of just get swept under the rug. So there was a real worry that Poe's death would hit the same fate. Uh, and were it not for Poe's friend, you know, really kind of keeping some attention on it, being proactive seems to be the biggest key, you know, in yes. cases like this. And 
And she has managed to make a big to, difference. In to that. keep the pressure on. Now there is a uh, there is a known name for Poe's um, partner, but it is a it's a non-binary identity, and and we don't know if this is actually a legal name. And that is Cecil Arnett. But we don't know if that's a legal name. If that person's you know can still uses that name. Um, they. There had been potentially some violence between Poe and Cecil during their relationship prior to going to Slab City. That was reported by some people that had saw some things going on there. Um, they also were in a polyamorous relationship okay. and potentially Knives was involved in that relationship. And so it might've actually been Poe, Cecil and Knives were involved romantically with one another. Okay. And that that may have something to do with Poe's murder. But we don't really know. A lot of this is conjecture. Right. Yeah. The the details get pretty sketchy. Um, but we want you to know about this person. And, yeah. you know, we, we've got to get the word out. That's the only way that... Um, change happens that growth happens yeah. that more information comes through and mm -hmm. you know we're committed to seeing the the um resolution of this situation poe um poe is a pretty vulnerable person a trans person living in slab city poe is also um native mm -hmm. and you know so we have considered this an mmiw case because poe is native and we know that the trans community is much more vulnerable, particularly the trans community of color, is mm -hmm. much more vulnerable to violence and to murder. Yeah. And we want to bring that to light and we want to continue following this case in hopes that a resolution will be found. You know, we don't want anybody out there thinking it's okay to kill anyone, but to kill trans people, to kill people of color, you know, just we're just trying to put the word out as far as we can well and shine light on places that aren't getting enough light yes you know and, and yet again this is a signal boost for mm -hmm. Poe's case to try to get more awareness more recognition we have never caught more hate than we have uh than on slab city uh cases and <laughs> so very you know, true if you need to come and leave your salty comments i guess just go for it Whatever. uh but this isn't a commentary about Slab City. It is a commentary about someone who was murdered, who deserves right. to have some justice. And I think more so in this case than I've ever seen people coming into YouTube and telling us exactly what did happen in this murder. And if you actually know, please contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office yeah. because everybody seems to think that they know what mm -hmm. happened to Poe. And yet... Nobody Police seems don't to, seem to have that information. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, for as much as y'all think that you know about this case, it's kind of shocking that the police haven't been made abreast of that. Right. Yeah. Don't tell us. Tell them. Tell them. Yeah. Or do tell us and tell them. Right. I mean, it's fine to tell us, but we've had a lot of, well, so this exactly happened or this is what happened. Well, great. If you know, if you have information, go report it. Yeah. Let's get to the bottom of this. Let's get some closure for Poe's friends and family mm -hmm. because that's all they want. Yeah. They want justice for the person that they love yeah. and to feel like the person that killed Poe has consequences, is off the street, can't hurt anybody else. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, that's a big want. piece of it. You know, I mean, a huge part of justice is making sure that other people are safe. Yes. And in this case, that should happen. It should. It most certainly should. So that's what we know. It's not a lot, but it's a start. It's the first time there's even been um, a person of interest listed publicly. The police say that they have had a large list um, mm -hmm. that they have been, you know, working, carving down on. But they this is the first that they've made a public statement. So if you happen to have information about knives 
or about Cecil or whatever name Cecil might be going by now because we, we're not sure about that, please contact the Imperial City, the Imperial County Sheriff's Office and let them know because they are looking for both of these people actively. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. Well, that's what I have on this. This is our Wednesday case. We will be back tonight with uh, Wednesday night case updates. We'll be giving you more updates on, you know, everything that's moving and grooving right now. And that's a yeah. 7 p.m. mountain. Lots and of things. Yeah, lots and lots of things. Lots of moving parts. Mm -hmm. Updates on uh, the Gabby Perito case. Yeah, Perito case. Perito. Petito. I knew that was wrong. <laughs> Petito case. Um, updates on the Daybell case. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to do a little looking because I think there might be something on the Summer Wells case too. So anyway, mm -hmm. there's stuff going on. There is. And we'll be back Thursday night with our live stream for the Psychic Hour as well. So yes. As always, like, share, comment, subscribe. If you would like to submit a case to us, go to truecrimeparanormalpodcast.com. You can submit a case to us there. Um, have a little patience with us if we don't get to it right away, because as you guys can tell, there's a lot going on in the world. Mm -hmm. But we do try to get to everything eventually. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know it. We are True Crime Paranormal with the Psychic Sisters. Thanks for being here. Take care. <laughs>